We're here in the Jaguar section of my garage. You know, we've probably done more videos with Jags than almost any other car when I think about it. And this is the new Jaguar F-Type. I have to admit, I was a little scared, a little leery when I heard this car was coming out because I thought maybe it would be a little too SLE and a little too country club. I remember the last time in the mid-70s when they came out with that the long Jag, the big XJS, and then they had a coupe version. It didn't really capture the essence of the E-Type. It wasn't a real sports car. It was more of, a, more of a boulevard cruiser, and that was my fear with this. Well, I could not have been more wrong, and I am always wrong, and I am wrong again, because this is a fantastic sports car. You know, when you see pictures of it, you think it's huge. It's actually a fraction smaller than a 911. And I always like to base my sports cars on 911, because to me, that's the perfect size for a car. The McLaren, the 911, anything bigger or wider, you're just using too much road. Um, this is a true sports car. It's got sports car horsepower. It's got handling. It's been getting great reviews all over the world. We're going to drive it in just a few minutes. But let's meet uh, one of the gentlemen who was able to get us here, the car here today. Eric Johnson. Eric, come on over here. You're vice president of Jaguar Northwestern? For the Western region. In, uh, He's the yeah. vice president. So if the president of Jag was assassinated, <laughs> you would move forward. Uh, that'd, there'd be a chance. So you are literally a heartbeat away from being the president I'd, I'd, of Jag. I'd be more like Al Haig. Than yeah, exactly. Be. More like Al Haig. Well, I must say, uh, this is a real home run. You know, Ian Callum is one of my favorite designers. Uh, he did the XJ, and this is his latest uh, creation. Well, tell us about the car. So, the, yeah, this is really a, the spiritual successor to the E-Type, but it's, a, it's really a 21st century car. So you can see the, the parts of our past um, respected with this design, the clamshell hood, the power bulge, the haunches, the, the tapered rear end. Uh, but you also see that it's very modern, very clean, very simple. Uh, and as you said, perfectly proportioned uh, as a Jaguar. Yeah, I'm surprised at how much of a sports car it is. We're going to drive in a minute, and you'll see. It has a terrific sound. Uh, weight distributions I read, what, about 52.48? With a V8, yeah. With the V8, and then they make the V6, which is fantastic, which is supercharged, just what, 380 horse? 380 horsepower. And, and that is a perfect 50-50 weight distribution. But we Americans, we like big horsepower, we like to go fast, you know. So it's, it's truly a muscle car that's also a sports car. Eight-speed transmission, correct? Yeah, eight-speed quick shift transmission, so it's got a, a super fast torque converter and a, and a great shift. Um, uh, great speed with a shift. Um, it's got uh, all aluminum construction, uh, so it's a lightweight car. How, how much does it weigh? Do you weighs know? about 3,600 pounds with the, in the oh, V8. Well, it's not bad. Yeah, a little bit lighter pounds. with the V6. Yeah, yeah. Um, you see, we've got uh, the interior. We've got a new shifter in it, the Jaguar uh, quick shift in it. So um, uh, you can have driver involvement. You can use the paddles uh, on the inside. Yeah, I prefer this. My XJ has the big. Dial. Dial, which yep. is okay. I mean, it's, it's all right, yeah. but it's not really sporty. Yeah, different, different uh, car, right? My hope is that one day they'll make this car with a six-speed, so let's keep our fingers crossed. But right now, it's obviously an automatic. That would be very cool. Uh, tell us about the brakes. Yeah, there's, uh, there's three braking systems available for, uh, for each model. This one's got the Super Performance with a 380-millimeter uh, front disc brakes. Uh, it's a Bosch system. So it's a, uh, it's a steel rotor, not a carbon. Steel, okay. steel not carbon, yeah. You know, I walked around this car trying to find all the little J's for Jaguar. Uh, they got this one here. Yeah, J-Blade in the uh, J there. You know, LEDs. And you got that one there next to the shifter, the grab rail. Yeah, That's yeah. That's a bit of a J. Uh, so there's little styling cues all around this car. It's nicely proportioned. I really like your airfoil here. Yeah. This comes up at what, 60, 70? It comes up at 60 and stays on to 40. You can also deploy it. <coughs> You know, one, uh, one thing with this is in, in the old days before you could deploy it, the police always knew if you were speeding because it would right. be up at... I've got a Carrera, <laughs> my Carrera GT, as soon as you hit 70 miles an hour, it comes up, <laughs> the cops know. So yeah. this, this you can do. Okay, very nice. Yeah, convertible top goes up and down up to 30 miles an hour and in 12 seconds. So very fast uh, up and down. And again, if you're going through town, you feel like putting the top up or down, you can do it without having to come to a stop. And what are we looking for the horsepower? 400 and what, 89? 495 in the vehicle. 495, okay. Yeah. Uh, this one is option to the hilt. I know these run for about, what, 68,000? Yeah, 69 for the, uh, the base, okay. uh, and then uh, uh, S and a V8S. This is a V8S you have here. Okay, now, you've probably read that they're calling this 911 fighter or the Cayman fighter or whatever it might be. 
And I think it's really true. I mean, the Cayman, once you load up all the options, that gets close to $100,000 as well. Yeah, so this car really spans between the, the Cayman and the 911, if you're yeah. talking about Porsche. Porsche is a you know, very great maker of sports cars. This is a very different sports car than the Porsche with the front engine. But, uh, it, you know, it, it accounts for itself very well. I think you're going to be surprised when we take this for a ride. And, and the, now the 6 has what? A center exhaust. This has a center exhaust, which yeah. kind of uh, respects the uh, E-type in the back. They're slightly larger. And actually, those exhaust pipes are made of a single piece and mounted right to the system. It's not a, a slip cover. Uh, it's, actually, it's actually made by a manufacturer that produces the same kind of thing for motorcycles. I think people would be astounded at how loud the exhaust is on this car. You know, you're allowed so many decibels by law. And if your car has a noisy engine or you can hear tappets going and things like that, that detracts from yeah. how much noise your exhaust can make. But if you have a quiet engine, everything else about the car is fairly silent, you can use all those decibels to come out the tailpipe. And plus, this has the electronic relay so you can make it quiet or noisy, depending on what you like. Yeah, I think you'll see with this dynamic exhaust, we didn't go for a smooth exhaust, it's actually rough. Right. You're really gonna, uh, it's very different sounding than almost any exhaust you can Yeah, you can if find. you like muscle cars from the 60s and early 70s, <laughs> you will like this exhaust. It's a big honking V8, you know? It's like, uh, think a Mustang that went to college at Oxford. That's kind of what you have here. <laughs> you know, we have an asymmetrical uh, cockpit layout, um, switches inspired by both our old cars uh, and uh, fighter, fighter planes. You see, we actually made some of the switches do multiple things right. to make it simpler. And you know, this is really about, a, this is really a driving car at the end of the day. You this notice the paddles and two of the other pieces are done in bronze. Yeah. That's kind of nice. Ignis yeah. Orange is actually the, the name of the Ignis design. Orange? Ignis Orange? I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, how foolish of me, bronze. It's Ignis Orange. It sounds like some bad teacher at a private boarding school. This is Miss Ignis Orange. She'll be your new... It's a nice car, and this car is just about $100,000. Yeah, the way it's equipped. But this one is optioned out. It's got everything yeah. done. Yeah. Well, let's open the hood. Can we do that? All right. Let's take a look into the hood. Got kind of a clamshell hood here. Yeah. As you can see, everything is nicely packed in there. It's not like the Jags of old where you open and you see the twin cam and the polished aluminum, but nobody does that anymore. It's just not possible. As you can see, it's supercharged. Batteries in the trunk along with washer fluid and all that kind of stuff for better weight distribution. Pretty bulletproof motors. I've got this engine basically on my XJ and it's maintenance free really. You don't yeah. have to do much. And uh, yeah, it's clamshell hood uh, made with a one stamping, one strike. So. Oh, okay, yeah. Nicely done. Now before we take this one for a ride, I want to show you the Project 7. That's uh, a modified version of this car. And it's called Project 7 because of Jaguar 7 wins at Mama. Uh, we did that up at Pebble Beach. I'll show you that. We'll take that for a brief spin, and then we'll take this one out for a real ride. Here, take a look. Well, this is uh, Project 7. This is a concept car, but like many concept cars, you know, when I was a kid, concept cars are always these wild, over-the-top things that never really made production. And modern concept cars seem to be very close to production, almost tantalizingly so, where you say to yourself, oh, I would like to do that to my car. And uh, this car has a lot of special styling cues on it, a few extra horsepower, and a few other trick things, and we'll find out about those right now with Julian Thompson. Julian, come on in. Are you advanced styling director? Is that the title? Yeah, design director. Yeah. Design director, okay. Yeah. So uh, obviously the, the new car is a huge success, and uh, this is based on the production car. Tell us what's different. Well, we just really sort of turned sort of the, the uh, design knob up to 11, if you like, in this car. I mean, we, we love this car, we're really excited about it. And as soon as it came out, we just can't leave it alone. Right. So we've got loads of uh, aero additions on the front of the car to give the car more downforce. Right. Beautiful pieces of carbon fiber. Opened up the intakes on the outside. We've got a 550 horsepower engine in here, and there's a lot more air into it. So you're about 50 horsepower over stock, correct? Yep, absolutely. All we've right. got the, we cut the windscreen down to get this really uh, cool look. It takes okay. about sort of. Uh, Take about four or five inches out of this. We drop this all down. We want the whole car hunkered down. The ride height is also down 20 mil as well. And at the back, you'll see this beautiful uh, cowling behind the driver. Well, that's what I love about Jag. You know, they always, they have so much heritage. And there's yeah. always, every car always has a little bit of heritage in it. And yeah. of course, that harkens back to the D-type yeah. and the 50s and the yeah, C-type. Yeah, it's going to be tricky how you play with it, you know. We don't, yeah. we don't do a retro car. No, no, It'll not a retro really car. Cool and you don't but, overdo uh, it, but... Yeah. You like those little cues that say yeah, Jaguar. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. and that's, that's a bit like the, the D-type. Right. And the whole name of the car, the Project 7, comes from the fact that Jaguar's won Le Mans seven times. Right, okay. So that's uh, all part of it, and also fits together. And a beautiful color blue. Is that, is that a production color? Is that 
that's a special color for this. Okay. This, uh, this uh, goes back to the uh, the uh, Acura Ecos blue, which uh, oh, of course. it's a modern version of that. Sure, sure. So okay. um, we looked at doing a car green, right? and then we looked at doing it blue to reminisce on the D-type race team we used to run, and probably helps that our design director, Ian Callum, is uh, a Scot. Right, so that's he true. Had the, he had the, so he we had can call the, it British racing blue. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> nice, nicely done. Tell me about those wheels. Are they true carbon fiber or is it a carbon yep, fiber? Yeah, there's a real carbon fiber, okay. uh, carbon fiber additions onto the wheels. This is, a, this is a modified version of a wheel you can actually buy okay. on the existing F-Type uh, as an option, uh, but it's painted in a special finish, black, and we've got special tires also we made to this car as well. And I notice it's obviously right-hand drive. Yep. Uh, can we open the door? Yeah, sure. Okay, there we go. And inside, again, you know, the driver sits a bit lower to the, to the ground mm -hmm. on this car. We load them down about 20 millimeters. You know, I'm a huge fan of this type of material. When I was a kid, I remember the early Ferrari Lusos and the GTOs yeah. used to have the whole back yeah. area yeah, done beautiful. in this quilted yeah, material. Right over the tunnel. It, it, it always looks so rich to me. Yeah. And it really looks rich in this car as well. A uh, transmission of stock or change in any way? That's a stock transmission as right. well. That's an eight-speed unit. Oh, eight-speed unit, okay. Yeah. And of course, you got the racing harness in yeah, it. Yeah, racing harnesses, and we got uh, carbon fiber on the on the fascia there as well. And we got the special blue piping running through the car, and this micro piping over the dashboard. I really like this. This really looks fantastic. Yeah, it does look beautiful, doesn't it? You know, it really adds to the car, yeah. it, and, it, and it gives it that classic look. Yeah, it is really yeah, cool. Yeah, it's really fantastic. Yeah, it's a nice blend of old and new, isn't it? I think Nicely so. done. Well, I don't see any old at all, really. I just I, I, this looks totally modern and functional. Yeah, it, but it it still says uh, Jaguar. Oh. Yeah, but nicely done. What'd you say? Four months? Yeah, four months. It was a, just one of our designers called Caesar, who uh, just you know all the designers do great sketches. This one landed on Ian's desk, and he said, "Hey, let's just build it." Well, let so. me ask you now. I know Jaguar has a lot of enthusiasts within the company. Is this something a guy did on his own time and then kind of goes to the boss and says, take a yeah, look yeah, at this? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. So that's, that's what I think yeah. makes it, that's where you know it's real passion. Yeah, all the designers do that. Yeah, yeah, it's and great fun. Uh, would it be possible to uh, take it for a ride? Yeah, that'll do. Okay. Fine, thank you very much. <laughs> No, I thought, I thought the cut-down screen, I thought I'd be staring at a bar once I got in the car. But it's actually, I mean, this almost seems production. It almost seems like you could do this. And it sounds fantastic. Yeah, so this is a, this is a bespoke exhaust system just for Project 7. So we've retuned this exhaust. So we've taken the valves out, we've rerouted the hot right. pipes as well. So it's almost like a, like a straight-through system, straight from cat, Catalyst back. So let's uh, review, for people who don't know this motor, what we have here. How many liter? So it's a five liter. Five liter. V8 supercharged. Right. Uh, the same engine that you find in the V8S. Right. Type. It's uh, we've just increased the horsepower and tuned the engine so it's got another 50 horsepower that right. brings it up to 550 PS. Had to uh, had to uh, upgrade the transmission. Had to upgrade the transmission as well to cope with that, right. uh, that extra 50 horsepower. And it's got an eight-speed transmission, but it seems. It just seems, as someone who grew up with three speeds and then four speeds, and then, oh my God, five speeds came in. Eight almost seems uh, incredible. Yeah, the transmission works really well. I mean, if yeah. you've driven the, the F-Type, it uh, suits the engine very well. It suits the car very well. Plus, it's a good-looking car, which Jags have to be. Did you ever contemplate doing two headrests on both sides? Yeah, the design team always had um, had the intention of making it a single seater yeah. with the helmet holder in the side. Oh, I see. This, we've added this extra seat purely for these these drives and these events. So I see. Yeah. When we uh, when we put the car on the concept lawn at Pebble Beach, we'll be removing this seat and having just the. A, so a metal piece would go uh, over no, here. It's it's it's, uh, oh. it's a leathered leathered piece which goes right. in place of the passenger seat and that and it has a helmet holder with a strap to hold the. I got you. So the intention was always to have it single seater. You know, with so many supercars, you find your vision just obstructed because the car is too big or the massive A-pillar. Uh, whereas this is not, not bad at all. You know, I've got a Ford GT, and the thing that drives me crazy is I always wind up looking around that A-pillar yeah, yeah. because, you've, it's, you know, you've got to have that for structural reasons. Whereas this is not intrusive at all. Nicely done. What's going on? People notice this car. Well, people always notice Jack.
Well, that was pretty cool. Let's take the vice president for a ride and see how it goes. Let's go over the setup for this car. You know, there's an infinite number of setups you can do. All right, here's our display screen. Okay, let's set it up now. I want to, I want to make it as sporty as I can. So what do I do? I put it neutral. Let's see. Am I neutral now? Yeah. So you, okay. And you want to put it in dynamic mode and have the dynamic uh, mode. I said dynamic mode off. So one more time, I'll put it on. Oh, that was the stop start. Oh, okay. Now the stop start. Every time you come to a stoplight, the engine shuts off. Yeah, and you can disable it with a with a button. But, I see. Uh, yeah, it'll. Uh, okay. It starts in 300 milliseconds. As fast as you can lift your foot off and. Right. So now I hit dynamic mode. Yep. Okay, dynamic mode confirmed. We have a configurable dynamic mode, so you can set up the shifter, engine, steering, and suspension to your own setup if you want. But sporty, so let's just leave it in the factory mode, which is all on uh, dynamic. Well, let's show them the uh, cool kind of air conditioning here. Yeah, so we've got uh, an active uh, center vent, so this is part of making the interior cockpit uh, right. more simple, more driver oriented with less distractions. Okay. So basically, as soon as you turn the uh, air conditioner on, that right. requires the uh, top vents. Okay, It'll those come on. up. There we are. And we're in business. And you've got the heated and cooled seats as well, right? Yeah, the, uh, actually use the um, uh, more button simplification. You right. just press it and now it's the, uh, in this case, yeah. just heated seats okay. applications. No cooled seats in this one. My ex gay never went like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're gonna see the, uh, with power on in dynamic mode, you're really gonna see the speed of the yeah. shift. The car has a nice rawness to it that I find refreshing. I love the sound on the overrun. When you get this car, you really have to get the optional, uh, what do they call that exhaust? Dynamic exhaust. Dynamic exhaust, that really, yeah. Lose the stereo, get dynamic <laughs> exhaust. And you know, I, I think you sit a little bit lower in this than you do in any other Jag I've been in recently. Yep. You tend to look through it rather than look over it. I hate these cars, you're kind of sitting on top of it. Um, good sight lines, you know, fenders aren't in the way. It, you know, it does shrink around you. It's not, uh, it seems like a bigger car in the pictures. I don't know why that is to me, but it's actually not big at all. It's actually quite comfortable and uh, I love the grab rail here. Kind of keeps your passenger over there, <laughs> which I kind of like. Now there's been a lot of debate whether this will outhandle the Porsche 911 or the Cayman. I don't know if that's true, but I know it's certainly a lot faster. Something I like about this car is you sit straight ahead. A lot of sports cars, your feet tend to be yeah. can to lever it over to the side a little bit. So you're, whereas that's not the case here. Actually, uh, not in. If you're in uh, manual mode and dynamic mode, this car will hold the gear. Yeah, it actually won't it won't upshift even in red mode. Oh, is that right? Yep. Yeah. It actually knows if you're in a corner, it will hold that gear, knowing you're in a turn. Only car made to back. Yeah. And so a six-cylinder have a very different sound, but uh, sounds more like a Formula One car. Boy, it's a lot of fun to drive. We should show them what it looks like with the top up, because we haven't... Uh, I haven't put the top up on this thing. Uh, to right. go to park, I just... Oh, go oh, back just, over here, there we go. You just push the top, push we'll the Push the top, in. there we are. Okay. Yeah, there you pee, right there. Oh, there we go, okay. Yeah. And the top goes up... 12 seconds. And again, we can do this up to 30 miles an hour. It lashes itself. Wow. And it tells you when it's all done. Yeah, very nice. All done. And it comes down at 30 miles an hour too, is yep. that correct? Yeah, up to 30 miles an hour, same thing. Okay, no cool. need to stop, we could do yeah. it on the road if we wanted to. Let's, uh, let's take it for a spin up in the freeway, see how she cruises. Yeah, this takes a little getting used to, but. I'll take it below 30, we'll put the top down while we're rolling. Okay. Hang on, so let me get below 30. There 
already. We've never been above fourth. Let's see what eighth gear looks like. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. There's five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> one, one through five or under, six, one to so one. So at 80 miles an hour, you're turning about 1,800 RPM. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. So you've got six forward gears and two overdrive gears. So top speed would probably be in sixth, right, or seventh? Yeah. Yeah. 186 top end on the V8S. Right. Top speed 186. Of course, once you're in eighth gear, you don't hear any noise at all. Let's drop down five gears. <laughs> you know, the old days used to be cars that were just awful and they didn't shift and they were just terrible. Now, just to be in the business, you've got to be an A. And this, I think, is an A+. Plus. It's just unbelievably. It is so nice to drive. I really urge you to, to get the experience. If you like that American muscle car feel with European handling, this has got it. <laughs> I want to use the start and stop technology, but every light is green. <laughs> normally, normally, I just get red lights. All right, let's, we'll try it up here. Uh, let's see what happens. Okay, I'm starting. Yeah, I'll come to a complete stop. Okay, engine just shut off. All, right, all the systems are still working. Let's Everything see. else is working because it's working on a separate battery. Radio, air conditioner, all that stuff. As soon as I take my foot off the gas, the car will start, correct? Yep. Okay, there we go. Look at that. Oh, okay. Not bad. Yeah. Wow. Hey, once you've, once you've you had it for a while and get used to it, it really, yeah. uh, you almost feel wasteful leaving the car yeah. on it at its stop sign. So it's a, it's a change in, in thinking, but you get used to yeah, it. Yeah, no, it's all right. You know, there's so many features on this thing we never got to. You got all these seat adjustments and everything else. But I think anybody that's watching this website is probably more interested in the handling and the sports car part of it. And it's a real sports car. It's a real sports car that when you put it in touring or comfort setting, it turns into an XJ Jag. But uh, it's very well, it's very well done. You know, Jaguar is probably one of the most underrated companies because back in the 50s and 60s, they got a bad reputation in the States because, and I think it was mostly dealers at the time, they didn't know how to fix them, they didn't know how to deal with them. Um, and so consequently, Lucas and all the kind of nonsense, they got a bad reputation. But the company is totally re, uh, revised. New engineers, new people like Ian Callum, just great designers. Uh, they've really been doing amazing things. And this is uh, a product of that. So Eric, thank you very much for bringing this by. I really enjoyed it, Jay. Thanks very much. I'm going to borrow this for a week and drive it around. I love this. See you next week. Mm-hmm. <laughs>